pit controller can be a confusing thing, but it really shouldn't be. In the RC hobby, a pit controller controls everything from submarines to waypoint missions to altitude hold to position hold. And then finally, this general stability of the craft in the air, because a quadcopter, for example, is just not stable without something like a pit controller. But even with airplanes that are stable in flight, whenever you put them into a navigation mode or assisted flight mode, that's also using a pit controller. So to get our crafts flying to the best of their abilities, whatever you're trying to do, the key understanding of how a PID controller works is fundamental. And the understanding of how the controller works is the key thing for making inputs and changes in the firmware and make things better and not worse. So the classic PID controller that we see and is used for almost everything is a proportional integral and derivative controller, a PID controller. Now, just like telling somebody in America how many degrees Celsius it is outside, it really doesn't mean anything to them. It's the same thing when you tell somebody, yeah, it's the proportional integral and derivative controller. Doesn't that make sense? So instead of thinking about it as a proportional integral and derivative controller, think about the terms as a pushing, imbalance, and damping terms. That more aptly describes what those terms are doing. Now, the whole purpose of having gain settings to adjust the differences between the pushing imbalance and damping of this controller is to have something that you can adjust to adjust those different factors between how much you're pushing, how much you're adjusting for imbalance, and how much you're damping your push that you're giving. What I like to do is rearrange them a little bit and call it the IPD controller, the imbalance pushing and damping controller. And then you have, for example, here your I term. And there is a relationship here between the I term and the P term and, and how much you're adjusting for imbalance versus you're pushing for keeping the quad on the sticks or on the control point that you're looking for. Then finally over here, you have your damping term and your damping term is to dampen just the P term not the I term. So if you have an imbalance adjustment and you're having wobbles because you have, you're have over adjusting for imbalance, then you have to uh, re reduce your I term or increase your P term. You have to adjust this balance between the two. And you can go this way or you can go that way. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, if you go this way and you move your P term up or I term down at the same time, whichever, and then you have too much push, and you didn't mess around with your damping, well, you might have to move your damping up as well because you might get an overshoot from this term as well. So in looking at a classic graph of how these terms work, you can see that sometimes referred to as KP, KI, and KD. You can see as we push the P term, pushing term up, it will bring our controller up uh, to the target set point, which is one in this case, but it will also induce an oscillation. Now let's take a look at that again and see what happens when we increase the I term in relation to the P term. So you can see the P term's going up. We're getting closer to the target because it's pushing it to the one, which is the target, but it induces an oscillation. Notice when we increase the I term, we're increasing that oscillation and it's getting closer to that target. And then we put increase the D term, the damping term, and it dampens that out. So we get this nice step response, stepping up to the target, and then just following right along the target. That response, which we get to here once we finally do the D term, is the critically damped response. That's the goal. That's the ball game, folks. Get to the critically damped response. Not overshoot, not undershoot, critically damped. Set a new target, thing craft goes to new target, hits it and goes right along it. That's what the goal is. And that's summarized in this graph here. You can see where, where the goal, the target is to get to that critically damped response. We're trying not to overshoot, undershoot. We don't wanna be under damped overdamped, and we don't want to have a oscillation that persists into the steady state. We want to have that steady state error be as narrow as possible so that uh, the craft's flying nice and smooth. Now, once we have those terms all in balance with each other, and you can do that anyway, you can move this around to adjust for imbalance and, and kind of move around those all the ratios. The next key thing is to get the maximum response out of the controller. You need to move all the terms up as high as they can be. And the limiting factor for how high those terms can go is gonna be set by the resonance frequency between the controller and the craft you're trying to control. That resonance frequency is gonna have a factor of a bunch of stuff. It's gonna to have to deal with, say, moment of inertia if it's a spinning move, or it's gonna to have to do, if it's an altitude hold thing, it's gonna be how quick the quad spins up the motors to increase the altitude, and then ultimately, that signal of the barometer coming back or whatever to tell it the new altitude is going to tell the controller, hey, you've maybe gone too high or, or too low. That 
time loop for how long it takes to get back to it, that's, again, you're gonna find this balance where it will start to overcorrect because you hit that resonance frequency. If you're dealing with quadcopter rotation, that's gonna be, have to deal with the moment of inertia of the crass and the amount of filtering uh, that's involved in all that signal getting back to, hey, I've done this thing the controller told me to do. Now I'm at this altitude or this rotational rate or the this heading versus that heading. And the amount of filtering that's applied on that feedback loop uh, and then the amount of associated delay with it is gonna have an impact of where that resonance frequency is. With the decrease of filtering, so less filtering on the signal, that means less delay in that feedback loop getting to the PID controller, that resonance frequency will go to a higher mode. So in classic quadcopter uh, terms, have all your balance terms for stability for peak flight performance, and then you're moving your P, I, and D terms up to chase prop wash and make prop wash less. The lower the filtering you have, the less delay from that gyro signal getting back into the PID controller, the higher those PID gains will be able to be. That resonance frequency, the mode of where that resonance is will be higher. So instead of maybe 60 Hertz, it will go up to 80 Hertz or hundred Hertz, and it will decrease the amount of oscillation that you'll see from say something like prop wash. I wanna underline that because that's a pretty anti-intuitive thing but that's how it works. Uh, the lower the filtering, the higher the gains will be able to be. Now you do run into a scenario where that if you don't have enough filtering on your feedback loop signal, that it could cause havoc with your PID controller. That D term over here really amplifies a noisy signal. And if you amplify it too much, if you have too much noise in the signal and that D term amplifies it too much, that's gonna give a lot of oscillation commands and jagged commands to the motors or whatever, your steering control or your altitude control and cause those motors to, you know, essentially is like someone, somebody's giving you directions and they say, speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, go left, go right, go left, go right, go left. And then they miss the turn. So you can have uh, really a mixed signal with you have a bad signal coming into the controller that gets amplified. It really, uh, the whole situation uh, really gets bad. So filtering is a necessary evil but it's an evil nevertheless, because it adds delay, which restricts how high those terms can be. Now, these fundamentals have been things I've been talking about on my channel since 2019. And in working with the Betaflight developer group, uh, was able to get and push for the sliders to be implemented. And I gotta say, there was skepticism. So there was a lot of testing and proving out uh, between the different folks involved at the time. A lot of tests by different people to show that, yeah, this is really how it all works. And if you're interested in reviewing that, I'm gonna drop a link down below to my website where it has the proof and tests, independent tests by other people to show how this works. And I actually have more data than that if you even you know, you're, you're interested in even more than what's shown on there. But with all that said, you can see here, you know, just, you know, putting into practical use, here's your damping slider, and that will move up your D term. When we talk about keeping tracking of the quad, you know, for, for the quad to follow and stay on your sticks, wherever you're having it either point or wherever, whatever rotational rate you're commanding, that really has to do with the imbalance term and the pushing term. So we're going to increase both of those at the same time. So we're not messing up the ratio between these two. And then ultimately, if we have the quads being a little drifty, we want to increase this uh, imbalance slider or decrease that. And we are calling that the drift wobble. So the intent is that if you're too low, you're going to get drifty. If you're too high, you might get a little wobbly. Finally, if you're increasing the master slider, that will move all the gains up and all the gains down. And you can find that resonance mode that we're talking about. That's just being just below that resonance frequency between the craft you're trying to uh, control and the controller itself is gonna be where your peak flight performance is. Cause that's your, essentially these, the, the, the magnitude of these gains is going to, as they increase, it's gonna increase how quickly the controller responds to whatever input it's getting. So you want it to respond as quickly as possible. When looking at something like the latest release of iNav 7.0 and the Easy Tune option, you can see we have similar things here. The names are a little different, but uh, in here we have, and we can look over here at the PID grid and then see this, we have the response slider, which really just adjusts the P term, the damping slider, which really just adjusts the D term, is, which makes sense. And then they call this the stability slider, which adjusts the I term. 
I think to some point this is good, but it's kind of missing the mark a little bit that we should really have, this should really be called tracking. And just like in beta flight, uh, push the P and the I up. And then this should be instead of stability, I think really it should be called in balance. And then it would just adjust the I term. And then the final thing it really does need is a master slider to move all these up uh, all at the same time, in, in my humble opinion. You can uh, compensate for that though, obviously, if you move the response slider up to get better tracking, you probably wanna move the imbalance slider or the stability slider up at the exact same amount. Basically, uh, if you know what, if you move this up like that, then move this up to the same amount. Obviously, if your ratio is like that and you move this up and then you would move it like that. And just visually looking at it, it's probably close enough, quite honestly. And then from there, of course, if you have your damping slider. Now, if you wanna move all your gains up, you just move them all up at the same time like that. And again, probably visually, honestly, is probably close enough. So that may just equally be the intent that, hey, we don't need another slider, just kind of move them all up or move them all down at the same time. And yeah, there's some sense there. Now, when it comes to other firmware like Arduino Pilot, Kiss Ultra, or Fettec Alpha, and they don't have any kind of slider behavior, they should. They should add at least a master slider, I think would be pretty helpful and handy for folks. But, uh, you know, if you're a user of those firmwares, you have to get that input back to the developers and, and or chip in and help uh, code it up yourself and submit it as a, at least for Arduino Pilot, because that's open source. The other two are closed source, so you can't, you can't contribute it yourself. Now, don't let it throw you off if you only see one of these terms, for example. So if you only see a P term or a pushing term, then it's just a P controller. If you only see a P and an I, then it's a pushing an imbalance controller. An example of this, you can see in Arduino Pilot for up here, the stabilization for roll, this is just a P controller here. You can see that across the top. And then down here for altitude, hold, throttle, things of that nature. So that's just a P controller. And if you get too hefty with this P gain, you're not gonna have a way to dampen it out because there is no D term to dampen that. We see the same thing in iNav in the Z position estimator. We only have a P term. You have to ignore these. These are should be grayed out. So we just have a P term. Again, no way to adjust for imbalance and no way to adjust for damping to uh, if we get too hefty with this P term that it would imbalance. The reason this is like this is because these the things they're controlling are very slow to react. So you only need really a P term to push on them. Um, to be pretty effective. I mean, I could make some arguments to add an, a damping term uh, to these uh, different control algorithms for navigation modes that it would be awful helpful, but nevertheless, I digress. And you're probably also very familiar with the feed forward term. The feed forward term, as you can see here, we have in iNav for the different uh, axes, and then in beta flight it is called stick response for the slider but ultimately up here, it's called feed forward. And you can see as I move this, these numbers adjust up here for the feed forward. Feed forward is really just trying to measure the magnitude of the acceleration of your stick input. So if you move the sticks really fast, that's a very high feed forward signal, which gets sent into the PID controller to help push, to help the P term, the pushing term, push the craft. Now, if you are interested in some more content on this topic, I'm gonna to drop a link down below to my uavtech.com website and the pit tuning page. You can see the pit tuning principles, which basically outlines exactly what we just talked about. There's a write up here for the same. This is a brief couple minute video, uh, 10 minute video on essentially the relationships between the two. Again, same thing I'm just talking about there, just did a little bit of different format and showing how the different gains going up and then how you can relate that to different flight experiences. So, if, you know, what do you do to increase prop wash performance? What do you do to adjust for bounce back? What do you do to adjust for wobble? And it shows about how you manipulate the different relationships between the terms. So it kind of puts it into practical use. And then also we have this series down here, some links to those videos where it talks specifically one-on-one -on -one about each specific issue you may be having. Finally, here is the proof data. So you can go into here to learn more, to see testing that was done. And in here, you can go down through this guide and kind of pull up these images and read down through this. And it shows uh, all the testing that was done to kind of prove this all out, specifically how once all those relationships are found, how you can move all the terms up and down to get to that 
resonance frequency, which we find here and see exactly where that is. And that is tied specifically to the D term response. And then obviously once you find that max D term, that's gonna limit your P term, which will then limit your I terms. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop them down below. Again, check out the descriptions for some more links and some more information on this topic. Hopefully this has helped establish a base understanding of how the controller works and really focusing on those relationships between all the different terms and then the magnitude of all the terms together for the maximum response of the controller. In looking at this, is just keep in mind, if whatever you're using uses a PID controller, proportional integral and derivative, which we're calling pushing, imbalance, and damping, as long as it's using that type of controller, this is how it works. Doesn't matter the firmware, doesn't matter the craft, doesn't matter if you're trying to go from waypoint missions to stability for prop wash, it's all the same. If anybody tells you different, just say, hey, is this using a PID controller? proportional integral and derivative? If they say yes, this is how it works. Again, any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helps.